Oui. Or mind is always fooling itself to take a side. You understand this, Mr. Mind? You're always fooling yourself to take a side. True mind has no sides. Think about this, you see. No sides. Boundless, infinite knowledge. Infinite wisdom. Infinite. Open, diverse, new, fresh information. No old, still, conditioned stuff saying this is good, this is bad. This is how to do it, this is not how to do it. This is the rules and regulations of life. This is the information left by deceased dinosaurs. What does it mean to take sides? It used to mean <clears throat> that it was a lesson. You needed comparisons to make judgment. But the lesson is for mind. Mind has created a lesson for mind to learn. Judgment and comparison. True being never takes sides. True love never takes sides. To keep you from realizing your truth. And remember, who are you that realizes this truth? That needs to be identified first before this statement makes sense. Because it, is it mind that is keeping mind from realizing truth? Or is it mind saying to mind, I can show you truth? So, so difficult to work truth out using a mind, to see angels using a mind, to speak with God using a mind, to understand Christ using a mind. To experience Buddha using a mind. In fact, it's impossible. Mind is not leading you to truth. Mind is keeping you from truth. Forcing you to create something spectacular. Paradise heaven. Revelations, experiences, follow the words, you see, follow external saints from past and future. The truth is quicker than that. Don't take sides. If your mind listening, you're... I've never heard so much rubbish in my life. We have to go down the good path. We have to go down the Christ path, the Shiva path. We have to stay away from the devil and starvation and cruelty and torture. That's your head. Do you think in your nature you need to be reminded of these things? In your nature, in your nature, do you need someone else to say, don't be cruel? Maybe you've been cruel all your life and you've, it's ingrained. And it's all I know. It's a path. I know is a path. I don't know. Path. 
spiritualists, gurus, saints, sages that speak, that come out and speak, use paths. They are guilty. Guilty or not. But revealing does no path. Is that guilty? Yes. Because it's a path, no path. So what can one say to convince you, whoever you are, whatever you want to get from this life, to experience truth, to experience yourself, to deny this fake knowledge, not this fake life. This, this life is beautiful. This fake information that a sinister mind, but it's not sinister. You see, when you say sinister, it's not a path. That this devious mind wants to keep you going down the good path, the bad path, the opposing paths. You're a man. You don't have to be told <laughs> that your nature through to your physical things is different from 50% of the other population. Animals instinctively mate. Animals instinctively build homes. There's no one reading them stories at night saying, look at the humans. They're building better homes. Pfft. I just want somewhere to stay safe, keep warm, so I can bring my children up. There's no path to nature. Plants come every year. In spring, they begin to grow. In summer, they blossom. In autumn, they fade. And in the winter, they're nowhere to be seen. And each year they come, they come with different petals, different colors, looking at different directions. They don't have any control of where they're growing. Life is controlling them. Life is controlling us. Until we decide, no, I'm taking that path. If you think there's a sinister force that Yuji Krishnamurti understands to be, and to <clears throat> support or unsupport his words, it matters not. It is a path. Nothing exists on paths. Truth is still. You are still. You need another human being to tell you when you want to go to the toilet. It is instinctive. It is absolute without effort, without even pressing the start button in the head. It doesn't even reach the head. You know? I want to pee. It appears to come through a thought system, a nervous system. Opposing states apparently are here to be learned from. Opposing states are here to be ignored. Don't go through this confirmation, this comparison idea. Oh, I'm here to learn, you know. This speaker has said on previous videos, it may be a purpose of opposing states, so we can differentiate between this and that, between man and woman. 
we don't have to differentiate between opposing sexes, between opposing what is good and bad. Our head says it's good. Our head says it's bad. And our heart, it says, I love you. I've always loved you. I've never not loved you. And who are you speaking to? The world, the universe, and every single being, every single plant, every single atom, molecule, within and out with. I am what I am, I love what I am, and I am loves that that I am. No movement, no paths. I simply am here. I don't know what to do, where to go, what to be, how to do it, what to want, what to not want, because I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means because I am that. The tongue doesn't know it's a tongue, but it know it, it exists for some sort of purpose. But the tongue cannot exist without something to taste, without a nervous system inside, without being connected to a brain, without the brain being connected to some antenna, without the antenna being connected to the universe, without the universe being connected to the galaxy and the cosmos and beyond and consciousness. We are all whole one, working, operating as one. One. One is not opposing, you see. One is not opposing. One is free. When no opposing questions, opposing answers are born from this one. What is there to oppose? The body goes into fits of state. The, these things may be clenched. And one says it's anger. And the body says, no, I love so much. I love so much. And the psychologist says, lock him up. He's going to start trouble. Don't believe his love. Believe, hope. We are entities of form, expressing ourselves through form, through a way of being. And when you give a name or an identity or a tag to that expressive state, you create an opposing state. I don't like that means you've went forward, projected, so if you don't like that, what do you like? You must like something else, not that. You may like this. If it has an opposite, you're going in the wrong direction. There's no direction. Be here, be silent, keep quiet. Stay within your own essence, within your own Dharma, within your own being, within your own universe, your own world. In your own universe, your own world, what opposites can detract you from experiencing? Experiencing takes place. There is no judgment, no value. There is no thing to reflect or deflect off of except the universe and the universe says, I am you. And you am I. Pure reflection. This ultimate mirror of consciousness. How can it 
project sight. It is boundless, boundless love. No specific taste, no specific quality, no specific energy, no specific direction for no specific this and not that or that and not this. Boundless, boundless, infinite, limitless love. When you say you are that, that means there's you and love. Love is. All is love. Love is whole. Love is. We want to enlarge. We want to exaggerate. How can you exaggerate pure, contented, special, infinite, empty, transcendental, translucent, beautiful, omnipresent, omnipotent, untarnished, unblemished, untouched? Love. 